So I was a camp counselor for many years. And part of becoming a counselor is you go through training. And in that training, you learn how to work the co-op courses, which are courses that provide different kinds of physical challenges for groups to learn how to work together. And I remember this particular year where we were being trained on how to use the co-op courses. In particular, we were learning how to do trust falls. Now you may have done trust falls at some corporate retreat or group gathering, or maybe even at church before. And there's trust falls that you can do on the ground between two people, or sometimes even a group. But on the co-op course, it takes these trust falls to the extreme. Suddenly you go one, two, three steps up, and you are four or five feet above the ground, falling into the arms of a group below. And below you, you have a group of people with their arms in a scissor position between one and another, ready to catch you. I remember this particular time when the experienced instructor was teaching us how to lead a group through this trust fall and giving us very clear instructions of how it was to work. That we were to fall like a plank into the arms of those below so that we fall evenly into everybody's arms. That we were to cross our arms in front of us so that no arms go flailing and hitting anybody. And that there is this call and response that was part of this falling process and this trust fall. It began with the person up on the platform saying to those below, spotters ready, and the crew on the ground saying ready, and the person above saying trusting, and the group below saying trust us. Now this experienced instructor, after giving all these lessons in how it was to be done, got to the top and offered to be the first, the example of how you are to do a trust fall. So she goes through all this process and does the call and response, and she says, trusting, and we say, trust us, and then she falls. And she doesn't fall as she has instructed us to fall. She wasn't falling like a plank. She was squatted instead. And instead of keeping her hands tight in front of her, they're flailing. And I know an elbow hit my face on the way down. And even though it wasn't ideal falling, ideal trusting, the group below still caught her. And I think we caught her just maybe an inch below she fall, her fully falling on the ground. It takes a big leap of faith to fall and to trust those that you can't see because they're behind you and to trust people that you maybe don't know very well. It takes a big leap of faith. Today in John's Gospel, we hear the story of how Mary once went to the tomb and didn't find Jesus, and then she ran into him, and she was the first to see Jesus in person. Then she goes and she tells the other disciples, who are still perhaps a bit skeptical as they are in the upper room, and then Jesus comes into this room that's locked and closed doors, comes into it, beyond the closed doors to meet them and where they are. And they rejoice in seeing him and they're thrilled to see that Jesus is risen. Unfortunately, at least unfortunately for Thomas, who knows where, but he wasn't there that day. And he would forever be defined by one moment, a moment where he didn't believe the disciples tales of the impossible that Jesus could live after a death like his. Forever dubbed Doubting Thomas, suddenly his story has been reduced to one moment where he wanted the same evidence as everyone else. Forgotten is the time where he courageously followed Jesus to Jerusalem. Never mind the time where he was confused about Jesus' teachings of many rooms, and he asked to learn more. He is forever known as Doubting Thomas. 
It is when Jesus once again crossed into the locked room with the disciples, hidden away, that Thomas was able to see Jesus in person in the same way as the other disciples. He then makes the most profound, or at least one of the most profound declarations of faith within the New Testament. My God, my Lord. He makes the association between God and Jesus. A daring statement of faith with an amazing understanding of who Jesus is. Not solely a teacher, a prophet, a healer, but God. But he's not remembered for that, for his amazing declaration of faith. He's only known for his doubt, or more accurately, his disbelief in the impossible. I wonder if the reason why he is known as Doubting Thomas, the reason his interaction with Jesus is always follows Easter, is because we most recognize ourselves in him. We come from an evidence-based society. To believe something is true, it must have peer-reviewed articles. Knowing someone to come back to life three days after a violent death is scientifically impossible, right? So how is it you have come to believe in this person you have never seen, this person whose side you never touched. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, to believe. To believe is an, an active verb, not a static fact. When we believe Jesus is risen, we wrestle each day with the impossible, that God has overcome death in Jesus, that where we think there is no hope, there is the possibility of new life. When we believe in Jesus as a people sequestered away in our homes like the early disciples, fearful for our health and uncertain about our future, we trust in Jesus who comes into our securely locked rooms of fear, who comes to bring us peace. We believe, as the psalmist portrays, that when all that remains familiar to us is stripped away, God is our refuge. That God promises to show up in the times when he seems he couldn't be farther away. To believe or to trust is not easy. Like Thomas, we may go on a journey with our faith. We may have moments where we are courageous, confused, doubtful, and confident. But what is more important than our ability to believe is the character of the one in whom we believe. The one who walks on this journey of faith with Thomas and when he doubts, welcomes him to draw even closer. The instructor falling from the top of that platform on the co-op course said to the group below, trusting. Yet she had a moment where fear or distrust snuck in, impeding her ability to fall safely. Nevertheless, those below who said, trust us, we're still there to catch her. Today, you are invited to trust Jesus. Trust that Jesus is with us in the places and moments where we are most fearful. Trust that he comes to bring us peace even in the midst of chaos. Trust in the impossible mystery that Jesus is risen and has come to bring new life especially where we thought death seemed final and inevitable. Take a leap of faith and fall into God's arms. God will be there to catch you. Amen.